All right, so in today's video, we are gonna be recreating this effect. Now it's a very simple effect and it's all done within After Effects without any external plugins, but I do recommend using FX Console, which is a free plugin, just to make it easier to add all the effects necessary. Anyways, let's hop straight into the tutorial. All right, so I'm starting in a 1000 by 1000 canvas and I'm just, it's just at 24 frames per second because that's what I like to work in. We'll start off with adding a text layer and for this I'll just do test just to make it nice and easy and I will capitalize that. Um, center it and then I'm gonna scale it up just so we can see it a little bit better. For this specific effect, fonts don't really matter but some fonts do look better than others. This example, I'm gonna be using a font called Norman Stencil and now we wanna right click on our text layer, create and create shapes from text. So then we can delete our original layer and rename the new shape layer just to test. While we have that layer selected, we're gonna go in our search bar here and search for path, which will bring up all the paths that we have in that shape layer. And then you can just click and drag them all and click the keyframe or the stop sign symbol, which will make keyframes for all, all anchor points. I'm just gonna take these anchor points and move them forward just a little bit, because um, that's where we wanna end our animation for this first layer. Now, while we're here, at the very beginning of our effect, we can click and drag to select certain anchor points and then I'm just gonna hold shift to make sure they keep straight and drag them down and redo and do that again on top. If you want better results, you can mess around with the different anchor points and how it looks beforehand just to get a bit of a cleaner look, but in the end it won't really matter much because we're gonna distort it anyways. So now if we play that, we have a super simple animation of it just going down. To make it a bit more interesting, you can select all the keyframes and then click F9, which will then ease the keyframes. So just adds a little bit more and you can of course play with that as you like. Now that we have this base animation down, we're gonna add our first effect. So I'm gonna use FX console, which is control space. And then I'm gonna search for wave warp, which will be our first effect that we add. The first effect that we're gonna work with is super simple, but we're still gonna do some keyframing. The values you'll have to decide what works best for yours, but you will definitely want to make sure that direction is set to zero so we get this um, downwards looking wave instead of going across. Now we can start, the easiest way to do is just working with the visuals and just working from there. So I don't want it to be super tight. Um, so I'm just gonna decrease that to about six for the wave height and then increase the wave width just to get some smoother looking wave. And then we are gonna keyframe the wave height and the wave width. And then you can click U when you layer selected to bring up all the keyframes and then go to the other keyframes we had at the end of the animation and then simply animate that to the wave height to zero to end that and then just decrease the wave width a little bit. I'm just gonna set it to 90 and then you wanna match the easing to your other keyframes. Another plugin I really like to use for my keyframes which makes it so much easier is Flow. It is a paid plugin but it's super easy and you can make custom presets. So I'm gonna use this one called um, Sexy Speed which is my favorite and as you can see it just creates a really nice simple animation of it going down and then slowly have the coils or the wave disappear. Now that we have this first layer animated, um, which is our base layer, you can go ahead and add a linear wipe because we'll use it later, but we won't animate it yet. You wanna go ahead and duplicate the layer you've been working with and then just rename it to whatever your text is and then dust. So what we're gonna do now is move forward a little bit to when we want our animation, the out animation to begin. Once we have decided when we want our out animation to begin, we're gonna go ahead and add three different effects. The first one will be CC composite. Then we wanna go ahead and add particle systems two. And then the last effect you wanna to add to this layer is rough and edges. We will hide this effect for now, but we will use it later. Um, we won't change anything. It's all just all the default values. Now we're gonna focus on the particle systems because that's where the real magic happens. The birth rate will decide how many particles you create. For this effect, you wanna go pretty high. Around 60 I've seen work pretty good. Longevity depends on how long you want your effect to last but for now we're just going to keep it in two and then we can mess with it later you want to open the producer and then that'll depend on your comp size but we'll start by putting the x value at zero and then we'll keyframe it and go forward however long you want it to last and then basically take it to the other end which will be the max value of the other so in my case a thousand you want to open the physics and you want to change the animation type from explosive to direction and this is where we can get really creative with how we want our dust to look. The main thing we want to work with is gravity. We want to set that to a negative value. So instead of going down, our particles go up to make it look like they're being taken by the wind. 
So usually I've found that 0.3 works pretty good. Um, and as you can see, it's already starting to move up. If we open the protocol, we can go to max opacity, put it up to 100, and then click source alpha inheritance. So now we can see all the craziness is away. We can see a bit better what we're really making. As you're scrolling through, you can see that it's starting to create dust just whenever the point hits the text, which is a very good start. And you can of course change the colors to fit your text. So in my case, we'll just do white because that's the color of our text. Now to change how our particles look, because right now they're only coming from the middle, we will want to go up to the producer again, and then we want to change the radius of the X and Y axis. We want it to make the whole text, so in this case 14, and then the X radius, I like to put at one just to make it a bit more dense. So now if we play it back, we've got the text exploding. Now it looks pretty visceral right now, and we can always play with that. For example, if we take the longevity down to one second, you can see they start dying way sooner. Now, one thing to sell this effect a little more is to go and play with the direction in the physics tab, where I'm just gonna increase it a little bit to make it go more to the right. And you can, of course, change that to go whichever directions you want. I just find that I like this look more. To make it look like it's really being pushed, we're gonna play with the inherent velocity. And in this case, I'm gonna put it to 10, which really makes it look like it's being hit and then exploding outwards, which is a really nice effect for this. And the last effect that we're gonna play with here is the resistance. If we look at how this looks at this moment without playing with it, you can see it's pretty widespread. But resistance is gonna keep it a bit tighter. So if you put it to about 10, the spread of the dust is a bit tighter and just looks cleaner overall in my opinion. So now we basically have our main animation down. But now let's get back to the one effect that we didn't use, the rough and edges. Now if you add this, you can already tell that it's starting to look more like a blobby mess. Once again, we can go and play with our birth rate and longevity to create some different results. For example, if we set the birth rate down to 20, we get a bit more of a scattered look. And that's the base animation for the dust that we want to do. Now we want to go back to our original layer where we added linear white, change the direction to go upwards. So about 50, 40 looks really good. And then of course, depending on your layer and the size of everything, you want to play with the transition completion. Essentially, you want to match the, t the keyframes to the keyframes of the particles. So we're going to set a keyframe for the transition completion, go to the end and just slide it up until our text is hidden. Now, we can see that as it goes across, our text dissipates as well. Now to spice it up and sell the effect a little more, we're gonna go ahead and add an adjustment layer. And the effect we're gonna add to the, this first adjustment layer is gonna be turbulent displacement. This effect creates a sort of wobble type of look and we're gonna animate it to make it look like um, heat waves. So if we go to the beginning of the animation, we're just gonna go to the amount and set it to zero and then our first keyframe. And as we go to the end of the animation, you wanna increase it and you can play with this value, but we'll just do it to 50 for now so we can see what it looks like. And then again, click U to see your keyframes and then we can have a look at it. See, it starts to warp a little bit as we go along. Now, this isn't quite as crazy as I would like it. So you can either decrease the size to be smaller to create more texture in there, or you can even go ahead and animate it to sell the effect even more. So we're gonna keyframe the size and then we're just gonna increase it. So now we have this effect. Now one thing we are missing and one thing I really love to do with this effect is to add an adjust, another adjustment layer. And we're gonna add one effect, which is called transform, but we're gonna do two things with it. First, we wanna alt click the stopwatch for the position. And then we wanna add a couple expressions just to create a bit more movement in our scene. We're gonna do the posterized time and set that to six. And then we're gonna add wiggle and we're gonna do 200 comma two. And already there just creates a bit more um, movement, a slight wiggle, but then we are also going to just set a regular keyframe for it, for the position that is. And then we're gonna go up and move it slightly up and slightly to the right. And that helps sell the effect that it's moving upwards as firewood and smoke. And that is the base principle of this effect. Now there's a couple of things you can do to make this effect look nicer and one of my personal favorites is posterized time. So I'm going to add that on adjustment layer and then I'm going to set it to 12. Essentially it's like animating on twos now that we have a 24 um, frame per second composition. It just creates a more stylized look. Furthermore you can always also add another adjustment layer that we're going to drag below the posterized time and we're gonna add glow. I like deep glow, which is a paid plugin, but you can create a similar effect with the built-in glow effect. So we're gonna add one instance at first, 
and we're going to increase the radius just a little bit to about 33 and then we're going to duplicate that glow effect and we're going to increase the radius a lot more now you can see we've got a pretty decent glow now if you don't like the way that the flames or the smoke looks you can always go back into your dust layer and you can go around and play with the birth rate settings the longevity and stuff like the inherent velocity which decides how much it gets pushed and of course i always recommend playing with the values and getting closer to the look you want as this was a pretty quick tutorial but at least you learned the basics of how to create a stretch text animation how to add some wiggle to it in terms of the wave warp which just creates a bit more of a stylized look and then also how you can use effects and layer them to create interesting looks anyways thanks for watching and i'll see you again next time